Hello, I'm Oliver Picard. Welcome to my workshop in beautiful Le Mousin, France. In last week's video, we got all our previously bent up tubes tacked together. So now we have a freestanding frame. Now you'll notice that this knee bar is new. I did that while you were away. Basically, this is the tube I told you was wrong last week. It was made for here. But when I checked my plans afterwards, this tube needs two bends in it. So I repurposed it as a knee bar and it nearly fit perfect. So two minutes before I started filming, I filed it up and tacked it in. So that's now tacked in. And today we're going to do the tubes between the tubes. So we're going to do more of this basically. We're going to get our lower door bars in or our sill bars. And we're going to make a new bottom back bar with, uh, with two bends in it. And we're going to get it all tacked together so it will be a strong frame because up until now, it may look strong, but when you make a hoop like this, it's easy to move them apart and stuff like that. So today we're going to get it all tubed up and all rigid. And then that way we can start putting um, some of the sheet metal in and stuff like that. And it can really start looking like a car rather than the world's most avant-garde table. Right, let's get uh, cracking, shall we? So now I've cut my door bars, my lower door bars, I need to notch them. And if I had a fancy leveling job, a digital spirit level, I could place it on, it would show me the angle it needs to be, then I could put it on the tube notcher, set it to that angle, and Bob's your uncle fanage around. But I don't have one of those. So I'm going to do the next best thing that's just as good, it just takes longer. Right, so we're going to wrap a piece of masking tape around the tube. This happens a lot around here. <laughs> Try not to get a crease in it. it. It doesn't matter whether you get a crease in it or not, it just perturbs me. Ah, stop it. Stay. That's it. Right? Around both ends. And then you need to hold your tube at the correct height with the use of a box or a glamorous assistant or a piece of wood or something but and you need to put the end of the tube past the center point of the other tube and then you simply mark it and then what we're going to do we're going to carry this over to the tube notcher we're going to line up the end the edge of the uh, hole saw with this line and that will give us our perfect cutting angle the reason why you have to go past the center point is because the drill bit on the hole saw needs to go through the tubing cleanly and that should give you a perfect notch. There we have it, door bars. It's an absolute godsend is that tubing notch. It makes repeatable cuts so easy. So I was able to level it up for one tube and then cut the exact same angle straight away and same with the uh, back two. It was absolutely superb. Right, I've chopped the legs down on the roll cage and the reason I've done that is it's at this stage I need to make sure that all my dimensions are correct so I don't end up with big problems further down the road and fortunately they are. I've also moved the engine off the blue pallet on wheels and put it on the uh, chassis table that's not a chassis table. My reason for doing that is I want to put this next back bar in and the blue pallet was getting in the way and all my levels were a bit odd. So I'm trying to level things up now as they're actually going to be. And um, it's looking really good. I'm really, really happy with it. I've checked all my angles, all my angles are correct, the angle of the bottom of the uh, door bar is correct and the angle of the roof is correct. It's really exciting now. It's really quickly going to 
start looking like a car. And if I get in it, uh, I can actually sit in the roll cage and it, it looks like a car and it feels car shaped, which is really good news. Someone said the other day on social media that my feet are going to be on the front bumper. Not quite. <laughs> I've got quite a lot, I'm sat a bit too far back actually, but not quite, that's not so bad. I'm uh, really happy, really, really happy. Right, it's time to make this back bar now. We've popped the body on to see how it all lines up, just to check everything's still all alright, and to also see the engine in relation to the uh, roll cage and the body, and to make sure that this bottom bar is in the right place. Now, I think I've decided to change the design slightly. Now I've seen it all in proportion, because this is the thing, you can do your maths and you can figure it all out, and you don't really know until you see it. And now I've actually seen it, me putting two bends in is kind of unnecessary. Now I can see it all in front of me properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a straight tube and two gussets instead. And I think that's a much lighter and stiffer way of doing it, because this, bar now comes much further in than I thought about so this is the thing best laid plans of mice and men and uh, you can you can draw designs all day on a piece of paper but until you get it all in the car and you've got it all in front of you you just don't know so let's make a straight bar again <laughs> we could have just used this one <laughs> So that's the lower rear bar. Now the reason why in the end I didn't put two bends in it is because it simply wasn't necessary. The original one would have been too far back that was straight, but when I looked at where it actually needed to be in relationship with the engine and everything else that's going in here, there was just no need for two bends. And so two bends are two weaknesses that we don't need. It's always better to have straight tubing than tubing on a bend, but don't worry, this isn't used in bending because this is all going to get triangulated. So I'm not using tubes in bending, I promise. Oddly enough, this uh, bottom lower bar is almost identically in the same place as the floor reinforcements in, uh, in the original Cox UGM floor pan that sat over there. But it's really exciting now because things are finally starting to look like a car. It's, it's bizarre to me that welding four bars in a roll cage makes it look like a car all of a sudden. Things really start to take shape. And I was really impressed by P uh, Peter in the Cox GTM forum on uh, Facebook, the Cox GTM group, sent me a photo of his roll cage. And his car is one of the first 20 something, I think it's number 24 or something like that. And it has a halo bar, but it has a bolt-in roll cage. So, without knowing it, I came up with the same solution that uh, was obviously the factory solution way back when. So that's quite a cool thing. Okay, thank you all for watching, and thank you Peter for sending me that photo. Thank you all for watching. Please, if you like this video, make sure you're subscribed, and make sure that uh, you leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think about all of this. So is it coming to shape the way that you thought it was going to come to shape. Um, are you enjoying these videos? And if you are enjoying these videos, make sure you share them with your friends. Thank you all for watching. Please be awesome to each other and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.